All right, fellas. Everybody good? Everybody ready to go? We got a special guest tonight. Some of you guys have met this guy. Some of you guys have been with the team. But just his bio and his path to being here. Three-time first-team All-Pro. Two-time second-team All-Pro. Eight-time Pro Bowler. All-Decade member. This guy's one of the top players at his position in the history of the NFL guys, Antonio Gates. Hey, what's up, man? Wow, man. You know, when I got the call, you know, I was like, it's a no-brainer, man, to come up here and, and, and talk to you guys, man. And, uh, you know, to me, you know, the first thing I thought about, I want to brainstorm in terms of what I want to say to you all. And then I thought about it. We heard a thing in our room called start fast and finish. And what does that mean? To me, start fast means being accountable, setting the standard, setting the tone, being prepared. Let's go, man. Let's go, fellas. Dominate all day. Dominate all day. We would say that in the tight end room, start fast. And I knew as a leader, as a captain, I had to go out and execute and set the tone. Good job, Bo. And guys would follow suit. What was finishing like for me? What what the word finish mean to you all? Hey fellas, let me have a couple minutes of your time. So our season ended against Jacksonville, right? Mm -hmm. All right we didn't what? We didn't finish it. Did Get him to finish through the ball carrier. Finish the tackle. Finish the tackle. Finish through the guy. Finishing to me was non-negotiable. That that's character, bro. That's hard. That has nothing to do with how fast you can run, how, how much you lift, how quick you can get out on your brakes. That's, what, that's what's inside of here. Your mind right, man. Don't take this for granted. You know what I'm saying? This is a very special team. And don't allow what you did in the past to impact this team. You're six, baby. Hell yeah, it was hard. Did things get tough? Yeah, it got tough. So when things got tough, when trial and error came, I pulled from my neighborhood. I pulled from when it was seven of us in a house. I say that to say this. At the end of the day, I played 16 years, and I never felt like my past made me entitled to my present. Because at the end of the day, it ain't what you did last year. This is a whole nother team. That's the whole goal of it building our team so that we're ready to play every time we come out. The Los Angeles Chargers select. Thank you. Hey, this is Coach Staley. You made a big time first impression on me. Quentin Johnston. There's so much work to do to get ready to compete for a world championship. Time. Your life's on the line every single day. And we show our fans it's going to be something special when they come watch us. And again, man, this is family. This, I feel like this is a locker room conversation. So this is the brotherhood. Start fast and finish. Chargers in the spotlight right now on Inside Training Camp Live. We are thrilled that you are here with us on a Wednesday, middle of the summer. It's going to be good. I mean, somebody once said, not a game. We're talking about practice. <laughs> All right, Beep. Hey, we're back, buddy. Hey, let's go. But driving in here to the Jack Hammett Sports Complex, it's like a party outside. You saw the fans in the costumes out there. They're packing the stands. There's excitement about this Chargers team. When we were on our way in, just packs of people coming in. Good turnout, too. Look at this. Incredible turnout. And it's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday. Day one. Day one. Here we go. Here we go. All right, all in, season three. Hey. <laughs> Keenan, welcome. Mm -hmm. 
you talked about, you know, building towards this year. This is the year. Yeah, I mean, this is – in the years we've been doing this, this is the most talented roster that we've seen. No doubt. There's yeah. a lot of things that got away from them last year that led to that exit in the first round. I do want to touch on Jacksonville quick before we can kind of move on. Cool with that? Not really. Do you still think about the game in Jacksonville? I think about it every single day. Los Angeles Chargers in the NFL playoff. This football team lost their left tackle, two of their starting wide receivers, their quarterback played with basically no ribs. I mean, it's kind of remarkable when you think about it that they actually got to the playoffs. They have punched their ticket to the tournament, and that is all they have asked all season long. Can you maintain enough momentum in the face of all this adversity to make it count at the end of the season? You know, when I talked about toughness last year at training camp, you know, I really felt like we exemplified that last year. You know, and our team had our best at the end to make sure that we made it. It's the playoffs. It's high drama. What's not to love? Kickoff is next. It is Jaguars Chargers in the wild card round. Tonight, both Justin Herbert and Coach Staley appearing in their first postseason. You know, I thought we dealt with a lot of adversity. Um, probably an unusual amount of adversity, injuries, losses, close games. You know, I thought we fought through a lot. Guys stuck together. You know, I, I think having been through that and, and kind of fighting through that and still making the playoffs, I thought we were in a position to, to make a run. Quick throw, tipped up in the air and intercepted! Joey Bosa got his mitt on it! Rick, let's go! Come on. Oh, the second play of the game is a turnover, and the Bolts are in business. Oh, looks for room and into the end zone. Touchdown, Chargers. Yellow line. Yellow line. Yeah. Here comes extra pressure, but the pass is intercepted. Left sideline, Asante Samuel. There was pressure. I believe that was Derwin James on the blitz, supplying the pressure. Go. And again, it's intercepted, and that's Asante Samuel. Oh my, oh my God! Oh my God! They're going crazy out there! They're going crazy! They're going crazy! So the Chargers with a hat trick, three picks in the first quarter. Run the ball here! Run the ball! Hands to Eckler. Eckler bounces to the left. It's a foot race. Cuts inside. Touchdown! Chargers! Man, you couldn't script it much better. When I think about the first half, I think about you know, one of the elite games that I've been a part of. Yes, yes, yeah! Herbert to Gerald Let's go, Albert. team! Let's go! Let's go! Yes, Dicker on to make this 24-0. This place, you could hear a pin drop. I saw a team that was really playing at a high level, that was feeding off each other, and you know that was on the road in a hostile environment. And so I think about the first half a lot because I saw a premium level, you know, and then in the second half, um, I think there's just a lot to learn from in terms of for this season where this team needs to go. This was the first half of our playoff game, all right? This was the first half, and there's a minute 22 left in the first half, okay? This is how it finished. And that's what I want to talk about right now. What I want to tell you about this game is that the football gods aren't looking down on the Chargers with, like, bad luck, guys. We didn't play well enough in the second half of that game. We didn't play well enough in the first half of that game. Here's what happened. We had five takeaways in the first half, but we only scored on two of them. Herbert fires too high. Field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. You're watching and everything's going well the first half, but I kept watching and thinking like, I don't know that they're maximizing all their opportunities. Eckler through the line, upended. In the middle eight part of the game, which is a very critical juncture in the game, the middle eight, we were outscored 14-0. Touchdown, Jags, and we got a game. In the second half, we had eight yards rushing on eight carries. And 
7 of 17 in the passing game with two sacks. Three and out. On defense, we did not get a stop in the second half. To the end zone, wide open. It can never just be easy. And on special teams, we gave up a return that set up a score, and we missed a field goal right, with about eight minutes left. And that kick is no good. Oh, boy. It is completely unraveling for the Chargers. And that's why we lost. We didn't play well enough. When I say Jacksonville, January 14th, 2023, what's the first thing that comes to your head? Loss. Disappointing. Broken. You know, almost broke a locker door and flipped the table. Like, it lit a fire, at least in me. Definitely lit a fire within all the guys, all the leaders, all the guys on the team. I mean, I remember being on the plane, just talking to Morgan, talking to Khalil. Never again. <laughs> Can't happen again. Sometimes there's going to be things like this that happens, where it doesn't go the way you thought it would. Right? Sometimes you're going to have a crushing loss, which this is. And that's part of sports. You sign up for all of them. All of them. Sometimes you have to go through a tough game like that to know, hey, this next time, you know, we're going to have what it takes. And I think when you're a competitor, you got to go through it. You know, in the NFL, a large portion of it is physical and your ability to play and your ability to recover after a game, especially, and it's a long season and takes a lot out of you. But I think that mental side of fighting through, you know, 17, 18, 19 weeks, however long it takes, is another battle. That playoff loss, this is going to be something that's looming realistically probably for the rest of this offseason. They start rattling off some wins. You don't just forget about a playoff loss like that. That motivates you going into the offseason, and it carries you throughout training camp. Since we left that field, you know, the second I had to walk across the field, there hasn't been a day go by that I haven't thought about that game. You're just in that fast-forward, rewind, fast-forward, rewind, and, you know, you're going back through every play in the game, front to back, back to front. I think about that this offseason. That's all I've thought about. You know, every time I work, when I run, when I'm tired, I'm like, nah, like, can't, I can't let that happen again. You know, maybe if I made one more play. Sort of goes one of two ways, right? It either, you know, eats at you, it sours you, it can become an obsession, an, an Ahab-like obsession, or, you say, okay, that happened. There's some lessons learned. I know that feeling. I'm not gonna have that feeling again, but everything to get back to that has to start in training camp. Now let's head to Costa Mesa with the Chargers where they have moved on from the devastating end to that season, guys. Yeah, they're trying to turn that page, Colleen. We got Nickel. Nickel's in the game, here we go. Yeah, boys! What to do, what to do! Let's go home. Get ready to roll, guys. Get ready to roll. Here we go. Sweetie. What's up? I got Leap Show here on Fox Sports Radio live at LA Chargers training camp and Big Mike Will. And of course, you got Keenan Allen joining us. <laughs> New OC. What do you notice uh, so far? Um, it's exciting. It's fun to play with. You know, he gives us opportunities to go downfield. <laughs> The basic, the basic. <laughs> That's beautiful, guys. Hey, great job, great job. I love that. Breaking news into first take, Helen Moore was not out of a job for long. According to ESPN and NFL Network, the Los Angeles Chargers have hired Helen Moore as their new offensive coordinator. All right, all in, Helen Moore, take one. Very official. This is well done, I can't wait. <laughs> John, I got you. I think one of the really good storylines, not just here, but in the league, is that 
So Justin Herbert has a new mentor, coach, in Kellen Moore. So what's going to be different with Kellen Moore? Sound it, sound it, sound it. What's up, dude? What's up, Will Clap? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's a couple things about me. Favorite TV show is The Office. Okay, so I'm part of this era. Okay, so I'm a little bit, I'm 34. So that's my show. Okay, so if I give you sarcastic references and meetings and you're saying, what the hell was that from? It was probably from The Office. Nice, nice, nice. Right hash 11, right hash 11. What attracted you to wanting to come out to Los Angeles and be a part of this? I think just having the opportunity to really get to know Brandon, I just felt like there's there's this really beautiful alignment. Question for you, because it came up. Are we going for two if we score here? Yeah. Going for two so we're going to do the, do the two-point play. Okay. You know, two things that we're really going to focus on are the run game on both sides of the ball. Let's move some bodies, man. Move some bodies. <laughs> There you go. Nice, Austin. And then the explosive plays. He's going to rip a seam right now. He's just feeling it. He's, he's going to rip one of these. Camp's coming. Camp's coming. Lay it up. Lay it up. Lay it up. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Hey, we're letting it rip. I like it. We're getting there. We're letting it rip. That's all I care about. His football philosophy and mine from an offensive standpoint, it's been an awesome fit. All right, seven on seven. Here we go. Come on, style of play. Style of play. Style of play. Let's go. Style of play. Closing out the game. All right, our offense, okay, when we've got a five-point lead, all right, and there's 421 left in the game, hey, we're trying to drive the ball to finish the game out. All right, so we got to go put a drive together. We got to go play. Come on, guys. We got to go. We got to go. We need to go. Hey, we got to finish now. Finish! Finish! If you close the game out, like you win by two scores in the NFL, that closer mentality, like when we have the lead, we're finishing the game. Yeah, that's it, that's it, finish! Yes, sir, yes, sir. There you go. Finishing is, is going to be critical, but I think it's also going to be about starting fast, too. Go, 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 go. Nice. Nice, Justin. Nice job. You know, I think about starting fast in a game, starting fast in a season, and then building yourself so that you're playing your best at the end. Hey, way to operate, boys. Way to operate, way to operate. All right, guys, hey, short and sweet here. Listen, good practice, third day. Hey, good red zone work. Okay, all that stuff coming back was good. The two-minute stuff was good. I'm looking at a lot of competitors here, all right? Every practice, we're getting closer, all right, to being as good as we can be. We keep taking the field this way, guys, okay? We keep taking the field this way, all right? Good things are going to happen for this football team. You guys with me on that? This is a good practice. Trey Pipkins, get a spray. Yeah, 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 keep working. All way, all three, one, two, three. All way. So what are you going to do with yourself these next six weeks, Brandon? Do you, do you get away? Do you, do you wake up in the middle of the night thinking of new schemes? What's the path? And a lot of people on the outside this time of year are talking about all the storylines that don't affect what happens in the win-loss column. Okay? And what we got to be wired around here is to be wired to get the football right. This is as good a roster, talent-wise, as there is in the NFL. You've got the opportunity in a really tough division. Can they get over that next time? The way that everything is designed now is to make you go here, and here, and here, and here. And as pro athletes, what you got to do is you got to be able to stay in the middle. you got to be able to watch the tape. And then your locker room chemistry has got to take over. No, I, I mean, I just think that there's, there's pressure at this level. And it's every day. It's not just game day. It's not just in the playoffs. It's not just at the Super Bowl. I think there's pressure every single day. Really talented but on paper. But they can. They're capable yes, of they doing it. Not many teams are. Bro, why, why the up and down play offensively? As pro athletes, your mindset has got to be in the middle of it. All right, we'll show up. How are you going to respond? Well, we got one-on-one -on -one drill. That's a great way to respond. Let's get it done. You know 
gonna help you? No, you you know what make it tough? When you get off the ball like that. Yeah. You hug that line, Fact. you in my nine, now, now nine. You grab, you grab, you grab, yeah. But when I'm here, yeah. I'm, I'm, I get to close a little bit. Yeah. Any player that's ever played this game will tell you that their teammates drive them more than anyone else. Hey, that's how I should have ran the first one. Yeah, that was good. I was thinking too much, like. And so that's what our job is as an organization is to make sure that we arrange the meeting between, you know, special players that can that can push each other and challenge each other. Because ultimately they're the ones who are out there on the field when all the pressure is on. I think what you have to do is you have to show your players how sports is throughout the history of sports, different sports, and the greatest competitors to play, whether it's a player, a coach, a franchise, they've been through things like this. And so, you know, I tried to spend my off season learning. You know, I tried to get better. I tried to learn from people who had been through it before because I hadn't been through something like that before. I talked to Greg Popovich. 2013, they're up by five points with not a lot of time left. And what he told me was, hey man, Right here. Just attack the basket. They missed a uh, box out. Free ah! They missed three box outs. They missed a pair of free throws. They inbounded it to the wrong guy and they got beat. And Pop told me, he said, hey man, what you gotta know is that that happens in pro sports. And it's just about how you respond. How, how do they put this thing in the rear view mirror? I, you know, I wish you could say it's just about one thing. Okay, on offense and defense, it's a big goal of ours to have an identity where we're better than anyone in the NFL. And when you put the pads on, there's that reality like, hey, it's on the line. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What energy at? What energy at? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready to see you guys come off the ball. Pads, it's on. Pads, we're going to find out. You would never got here if you didn't have this in your game. We're looking for people that can do it all day, every day, for how long it don't last. That's what we're looking for. Creating the identity of the physicality and the toughness at the point of attack. So when I look at great finishers, I look at Michael Jordan, I look at Larry Bird, those guys, they wanted to watch the ball. Oh, yeah, Sante. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great job. Hey, make sure we're thudding in team. Play pad level now. Pad level. Somebody will put their hands on the 250-pound tight end and win. The power, that's going to create the finish. I think that we have guys who have invested in our team for two years, and I think that they're ready to go have a big-time season. It begins in training camp where, okay, we've got some new guys in here, got some guys who have experienced some success. Last season, and I think Charger fans are like, please don't bring this up again, but it's hard not to. It's funny, but you don't erase it. I think that helps build your culture. We've seen it go both ways. And you just can't be so obsessed with how last year ended, because if you are, this season will end before it really ever starts. When you go back and you think about what happens in one NFL season, I mean, there's just so much stuff that goes on. I think back to the very beginning of this, and some guys have been here the whole time, some guys I've known for a long time, a little bit shorter time, but I think you guys have all earned your place here. And I think what we want to be able to do is feed off you guys and make this your football team. Throw when you got me, babe. All right, here we go, baby. It's first time, brother. Huh? First of many. Huh? First of many. And if I look back at our first two years, I think we've done so many great things and you know, building a team, a culture, all that good stuff, winning games. But I feel like this is the first time where I felt like, man, this group of guys can go carry us. 
you guys can go carry us together and all in faith. So third and ten. I think the effort of this Charger defense has been extraordinary. Chargers bring four. They flush to it and they get to it with Morgan Fox. He had been knocking on that door all night, and this time he kicks it in. The Chargers with a new set of downs at their own 47, just shy of midfield. And play action again. Herbert climbs the pocket, takes a shot, has Keenan. Downfield he goes. It's caught. Keenan Allen. Yeah! Yeah! You know it's that. You know. It's, 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 it's that right there, you know? Fourth down, a fastball, Carr, Keenan Allen. A lot more of that, a lot more of that. Gun snap, here comes pressure, Carr, hit as he throws, it's stripped. Guess who? Fuck out! But it's that, like it's that, you know? This, this is what I'm talking about right there. Not the, not the win, but the, but the aftermath. Body slammed him to the ground. Mike Williams. What? Tyreek in motion to a throwing to Tyreek Hill. Broke it up right away. And Aloe Gilman. When I think of Aloe, like I think of this. Like, I think of like this play, and I think of like who he is. So you think about how you can run the ball down here. I was looking for a really good one over your time here, man. And you know, you came alive last year, that toughness. You know, when an old lineman does that in the end zone. You know, like, that's a real thing on offense. And Walker, does he get out of the end zone? No, it's a safety! Sebastian Joseph Day trying to light a fire for the Chargers. I, I brought this one out of the archives, okay, for this guy. I got two here for him, I guess he's having twins. Hey, we're trying to I had to go with the other jersey for you, but this is kind of like a like a sweat like. So I had to go. I kind of went against this guy. He always had that little that little thing. Pressure. Khalil Mack gets off his block. He's going to be dropped again. Khalil Mack with a sack. His second. Herbert escapes. He's going to take off and get the first down to the ground. Slide inside the twenty yard line. And move the connection made. But it's that. Anyways, so what I wanted to do is just kind of show you that because, like, that's what the team is. I kind of use the analogy sometimes with our team of the microscope and the telescope. Uh, I know when I was going through my cancer stuff, envisioning the end helped me get through it. Like, knowing that, hey, at the end of this, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to, this is how it's going to be. This is how I'm going to be. All right, let's have a great practice out there today. Split it up. You know, since I've become the head coach here, I've thought about being a Super Bowl champion. You know, that those are where my, that's where my vision is. That that's where my dreams are, my expectations are for us. I think you have to do that when you're kind of on a journey. Anytime in life, there's something I want to achieve, it always starts with a vision. So Rashawn, as you begin this season, what is your vision? What do you have in mind for the end? You can tell everyone's excited. Everyone has this feeling that, you know, we, we've got something really special here. And Like in a movie, like, there's always a climax. There's always something that a character goes through. He has to go through something that is like some horrible thing that he goes through, right? But what it does, it, makes him a dog or it makes her a dog you know like she always like rises from the ashes and i think that's where competitive excellence comes from you know comes from that pressure comes from your losses you know rookies when they at least when i was new to the game you're used to a, a season that's 12 weeks long 13 14 tops and now you're coming here and you've got you know three or four more weeks added onto that i think that part of you know staying physically mentally tough fighting through that year and knowing that Hey, the, the most important games are in December. What do you think needs to change for the Chargers to move into that very top group of the AFC? No more excuses, I guess. That, is that the way to look at it? No, I, yeah, I don't think there are any excuses. They have, they have what they need to get it done. You got to be able to, you know, kind of envision the end in its best way, and then, you know, zoom back in and then be ready for all the hard work that's ahead.